fucking soon. Dude, I can't wait. I can't wait to get out of here, dude. I haven't had a vacation in like maybe like five years. I did a lot this last year. I went to Puerto Rico. Did a weekend getaway in Duluth. How's Puerto Rico? I hear it's like fucking crazy for American tourists, though. It's fucking sick. Just be yeah. in the safe spaces. Is that where the big Jesus is? No, that's is Brazil. That that's Brazil, you moron. I don't know where the big Jesus is. I don't be looking that up. Oh, fuck, you don't know where the big Jesus is? <laughs> Puerto Rio Rico, de Janeiro? Puerto fucking... Rico, Peru, they all start with P. No, don't oh. you remember the Brazilian uh, Olympics? Brazil. The Brazilian <laughs> Olympics and shit, man, where fucking Ryan Lochte was like, they robbed me. I don't know, wherever the, the Flavela map is in fucking Cod. That's, that's, that's <laughs> No, the, 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 the favela one, yeah. I think that one's more or less like Uruguay, Bolivia. You know, I think it's, it's on the other side of the... You know it's sick that you, you played Max Payne three, right? Nope. This, oh. the, but where you can slow mo dive and yeah, <laughs> it's like the John Woo shit. But yeah, he had, there's a scene where he's in like a flavela and he's like bald headed and he's got the Hawaiian shirt. And he's just fucking murking indigenous people. Say it with me, favela. Flavela. Favela. It's fla. It's got an L in it. No, no. Favela. 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 Which is slums. Okay. Um, okay. that's the name of the map. No, wait. That's the name of a different map. On Call of Duty. The slums. Do you remember yeah, playing shit. Slums? <laughs> well, there's one called Slums and one called Favela. Yeah, I was in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> All the taps run brown. <laughs> that's a different part of Michigan. <laughs> I'm just not doing good with my, like, my <laughs> geography today. <laughs> <laughs> said, what's, which one <laughs> what's the capital of minnesota st paul <laughs> which one has the big jesus st <laughs> <Saint> paul <laughs> <laughs> not detroit <laughs> the big jesus in detroit is just some homeless guy <laughs> it's a statue of eminem <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Perfect Movie Podcast, the podcast where we answer the question, is this a perfect movie? I'm Michael. I'm Kaylin. I am Dakota. Oh my God. Today, we have a guest. It is our first guest of Friends February. He's my two-time ex-roommate. Well, two-time, I'm going to say two-time roommate. Two-time ex-roommate makes it sound Yeah, yeah, come negative. on. Two-time roommate, good friend, outdoorsman, all-around renaissance man. Just a stand-up guy. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's Dakota Godfrey. So we actually tried to do this before with Dakota, and it didn't really work out too well. <laughs> I'm in a better position now than I was in the last couple of that's you know, our, times. That's our only lost podcast. Yeah, that's for all the, the mess video. For all the technical issues, for all the... Oh, no. That's a podcast that never got recorded. The mess video was after the the podcast where we were supposed to watch. That also went off the rails involving you, although you weren't going to be on that. <laughs> no, he was going to be on that. That's why we watched it with him, I believe. We watched um, Gods of Egypt. Remember that? Oh, no. We had to shut that off. That was the most <laughs> trash movie I've ever seen in my life. It's when we tried to watch Gods of Egypt. And, and then, then we got drunk. And then we got drunk instead. <laughs> and then we uh, ended up buying some other movie, didn't we? 
just no we we started watching gods of egypt on the Redbox app the Redbox app streamed in like <laughs> terrible quality <laughs> he's the so only then, one that i didn't even know there was a red box app. app that's just what it said it was free on so then we go to voodoo i buy i still own gods uh, of egypt the hd oh yeah in like hd the, uh, we watched HD. like 15 minutes of it and we said fuck this shit because we'd been drinking this strawberry vodka organic strawberry <laughs> vodka <laughs> and then we said you know what's another bad movie we could watch let's watch the phantom menace i think is what we decided mm. on it was a star yeah, wars prequel. yeah 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 attack of the clones it, it was, was yeah attack of the clones. it was attack of the clones yeah. okay and so then we, we also didn't get into that because <laughs> that movie kind of fucking sucked too <laughs> no i think it was about when uh when uh, anakin skywalker cuts off that one person's hand uh, the 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 lady that's that's a shapeshifter that gets hired as oh, an assassin the, the who also oh, yeah we bugs. didn't we lady. didn't even make it past the, no. yeah, the bug lady no. and then we went that went to the thing where it was like so and so hired so and so and then Boba Fett hired this girl <laughs> and then this girl hired the bug to do all this dirty work exactly uh, and then the rest of the night was a blur and then yeah <laughs> and then we were like fuck it we're having a party <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't watch this movie at all. Um, but no, the last podcast had nothing to do with that. That was when we were going to do S- Scarface. Yes. And yeah. then we recorded the Scarface podcast, me and you, because you couldn't make it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that one, we were just like, that one's just in the trash bin. Like, yeah. that one will never be released. That Maybe one, it'll see the light of day eventually. But That one will stay in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. So, today we are not doing Scarface. Today, uh... Our, our guest got to choose our movie, kind of. I, I texted you the idea. After he, been... he forced my hand, but it was an amazing idea, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I think this is a great one for Dakota to be on for because he's an expert in Nacho Libre. I thought you were going to say... Nacho! <laughs> I thought you were going to say an expert in Mexicans. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know me. <laughs> Multicultural. <laughs> You know, I was considering starting this podcast with uh, he did the nacho. I was gonna do because I started uh, the last podcast singing a bit of the intro song, the yodeling from uh, Raising Arizona. I was gonna start with oh, when the fantasy has ended <laughs> and all the, the children, children are gone. gone. <laughs> Incognacio, <laughs> Incognacio. <laughs> They are ready for you now. So, we're talking about Nacho Libre, 2006. 2006 sounds right. I believe that is the correct year. Long time ago. uh, Jack Black film also written by mike white the this is the duo that brought us um school of rock which is on our perfect movie list and also involving jared hess who we know from napoleon dynamite which yes. is also on our perfect movie list so we're at, right here we're having a, this is a venn diagram and in the middle is us and we're enjoying this movie yes who wants to talk about the relationship with uh not napoleon dynamite natural libre first well i'll tell you back back way back in the day i saw this in theaters actually i was at a uh at a buddy's birthday party. It was one of those movie theaters that they serve pizza, you know? Very nice. A long time ago. I don't think they do that anymore. Do some, they? some theaters, like the really small local okay. ones. So. But yeah, so I saw this in theaters. Great, great movie. Got it on DVD when it came out and probably watched it like once a month as a kid, Hell if yeah. not multiple times. So... Are we talking like a real pizzeria? Or are you talking about when no, it's 16- one of those one of those places where you're having a blast and they're giving you pictures of soda, they're playing the movie. Oh, yeah, they actually have the, like tables. Yeah, or, like yeah. The Chan the has some dinner theater type beat. Yeah. yeah, no. Maybe. I don't know if you've ever been to Marcus Theater in St. Paul, but they do that still. I was picturing, you know, when you just go to the counter at the regular theater and the sixteen year old gives you the heating lamp like it's a <laughs> personal <laughs> pizza. No, no it's the, the full service, deal. man. I'm sure the adults were having a couple beers through what they thought wasn't a good movie. You know, watered down beers. Kalen, your turn. (laughs) (laughs) Um, kind of like the same type of story. I can't remember like the first time I ever watched it, but it was definitely either like at a friend's house, or uh, I don't. I don't think I saw this in theater, but 
it was hilarious. I mean, as a kid watching this shit, it was the funniest shit ever. I mean, much in the same vein as like Napoleon Dynamite, you know. Knowing our past, I wouldn't be shocked if I was involved in your first watching of Natural Libre. Yeah, I was going to say, we either, I think you're the first person that showed me Napoleon Dynamite. So I'm guessing that I probably watched Nacho at your place. Yeah, Nacho Libre is not a movie I saw in theaters. I definitely saw it on DVD sometime. I remember my sister one day brought home Napoleon Dynamite and she was like, this new movie, it's the it's the thing. So I watched it with her. I was, you know, that was like 2007 probably. So I was not, I was like 12-ish. So that's like right in the... You fucking old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right, like right in the zone where Napoleon Dynamite's going to hit hard. And then Nacho Libre, I think, came out after that. But I never got a chance to see it in the theaters. Uh, Movie theaters are lame anyways, really. Truly. But that was definitely something we did a lot back, in, you know, when we were kids. That's, that's, I'm actually surprised I didn't see this in theaters. Either. I mean, that's where you get away from the adults. Yeah, is in the movie theater, so you can do, you know, you know, <laughs> get up to stuff. What did you what? get up to, Dakota? In the, in the nothing in the nefarious the in the dark <laughs> like you guys. Holy cow! <laughs> I was watching the exits, man. <laughs> <laughs> Low key. <laughs> Low key. <though. laughs> Damn. You said identify both exits. I'm like, I'm like looking for the guy dressed as the Joker. Kind I'm of like, if there's, a, and also, I'm like, if there really is ever going to be a fire in here, we're fucked. Now you got to worry about getting fucking shot. That's how Hitler died. In a movie theater? Yeah. In a lot a lot fire. People, and in Glorious Bastards. Yeah. A lot of people die in movie theaters, it seems like. Yeah. You know, if you if you ever gone to a matinee, there's a lot of seniors that go in the movie theater. Do you ever? How often do you think a uh, uh, like the custodian just finds just depends? No, <laughs> no old dentures. No, just you know, old Gene has ticker ticked its last tick, and oh just, dear God, I'm sure that's happened. They are stone yeah. cold a few times. Pretty easy to clean up at 10 a.m. <laughs> Imagine an old person going to see Mad Max Fury Road in the they probably They'd murdered a, a lot of old people. <laughs> Oppenheimer <laughs> probably killed somebody. They'd be like, I remember this. <laughs> I was on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> the flashback. <laughs> the bomb killed him, not me. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Nacho Libre. <laughs> Shall we move along? I just have a random fun fact, which I snagged off of IMDb. Did you know that uh, during the filming of this movie, Jack Black's PSP was stolen and they had to shut everything down so he, they could find it? This shit is valuable, man, especially 2006. Back in the day, that shit was high commodity. 2005? In Oaxaca? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Customs should have told him. They said, uh, Sir Sir Jackson Black. <laughs> um, it's not wise to be flashing around your valuable electronics. It's worth a, its weight in gold in Oaxaca. That shit had Battlefront 2 in that bitch. Yeah, he had Battlefront 2. What's another good PSP game? That Uncharted sequel that nobody else... You know what I'm talking Kill about? Killzone or like... Killzone. Yeah. I was an Xbox kid. Yeah. But even before that, back then, Nintendo I remember it had kid. like friends having a PSP, and I was like highly envious. I was like, I was like, this motherfucker's playing 2K after gym class. <laughs> like, what the hell? i you know, it, in that age, it seems so much more cooler and high tech. But looking back, like a, a DS would have been the better thing to have than a PSP. Yes, no. coming from the guy who had a DS, it's not the same. No, a DS is more Pokemon akin was to sick, like, like a Game Boy, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's no good PSP games. They're just like console games that yeah, but that, that you can play, play portably. A, yeah, that's like right, that's the whole appeal. Sick. Yeah. All right, but like the all timer games, like the Super Super Mario's and whatever that ended up. Yeah, on. but you could play fucking yeah Battlefront two on your way to North Dakota. Kingdom Hearts. Uh, whatever fraction do you know remember kingdom hearts had like kingdom hearts five eighths kingdom hearts one and a half three times maybe i wasn't a big kingdom no hearts didn't guy. play kingdom hearts All All right. Right. My well thing. anyways anyways nacho libre <laughs> nacho libre <laughs> shall we move along to the performance test it was the performance of a lifetime the performance test is where we talk about our favorite actor scenes characters and moments I don't know any of the actors' names except for Jack Black. It's Jack Black. There's only one other notable name. Uh, a lot of them are the nun. The the nun lady. She's she's been in stuff. She has shown up in things uh, later. Uh, I could look it up, but I was thinking of Peter Stormare, 
who's a name you recognize. He's been in lots of things. He's the eagle, uh, the guy that yes. guides them to the oh. eagle. Yeah. He is the other half of the kidnapping duo in uh, Fargo. Oh, yeah, there he, you he go. He always plays a villain. And he's in the beginning of John Wick 2. I think he's like the first guy John Wick murders in John Wick 2. Yes. Well, after he murders all the, like the guy with names and lines, after he murders right. like 40 people with a car, then he murders him. Wasn't he in one of the Batman movies too? Shit, probably. He was in, Shit, I think probably. he played a mobster in one of the, the Batman movies. I he's just, wrong. he's a man with a, with a villainous you face. You could put a lot of grease in his hair, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Jack Black, um, obviously the standout. Um, he, this is tied with Napoleon Dynamite. It's one of the qu- most quotable movies of all time, especially in regards to Jack Black's lines and his line delivery um, in total because he, he just kills it. In this. There's really not much else to say about it. Where is your rope, Ignacio? It was stinky. But these are my recreation clothes. They look expensive. Thank you. I mean, yes. They may have the appearance of riches. But beneath the clothes, we find a man. And beneath the man, we find his... Nucleus. The beginning of my like performance test notes are just a bunch of. Then I started watching the movie, not taking as many notes, but it's just the way, and then something that Nacho does, and it's like the way Nacho scribbles in mass when he's drawing the designs of his wrestler <laughs> costume, and then he like peeks back at Jesus, and then he peeks over at Chancho eyeing his paper, and he's <laughs> the like, way he's afraid of the stained glass. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little stuff where he's like he throws the beehive at uh, uh, whatever his Escalito. Name. Yeah, and then he's like, "Yes." <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, it's just little stuff like that. Like, his face and stuff. He's he's kind of like Jim Carrey in that way. He can kind of contort his face a little bit. He, he's hilarious. it's a lot of just showing the two front teeth. Really, just the picking up the lip. Like yeah. I think it was picking up the lip, and there's a lot of eyebrow acting. The eyes, yeah. and eyebrows are <laughs> yeah. doing a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah. Um. I love the way, and I don't remember this, but uh, when Nacho gets sent to town where he finds the dead guy. Um, the, the, the not dead, dead guy. Yeah. Before that, though, the the monk that talks to him punches him across the face to get his attention. <laughs> he says, Nacho, there's, nice. a pretendent, there's some business you need to attend to in town. Me and the sister need to discuss some holy things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think also um, the kid who plays Chancho, everybody's favorite oh, top little notch. kid. He's great. I saw him in something else recently too, but he he was really really small. But I don't think any of these kids really have a career. Is that the Actually, kid from Modern Family? No, no I don't know. That no. was supposed to be a bad joke that you guys weren't going to take because he was fat. <laughs> Come on, Michael, body shaming over here. <laughs> Built like a stick vape. <laughs> um, there's another kid that he they always cut to his face and he's crying. Do you know what? He's really skinny. He's really small. Moises Ares. The, yeah. The, was that his start of his career? I believe so. Because then after that, he went on to do Disney, Disney Channel stuff. Yep. And then he started hanging out with Jaden Smith, and they're all a bunch of weirdos. Isn't he all sure tatted he was, up now? And like, didn't he have like uh, cornrows? I'm sure like, he's a real douche. <laughs> a real douche. <laughs> that kid. He's kind of a douche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I think there's just a lot of like. Kind of unknown actors, but everybody's really great. Sister Encarnacion is Ana de la Guerra, who's apparently an army of the dead. Really? Oh, wow. Cowboys Ooh. and Aliens. Ooh. Great movie. <laughs> the Forever Purge. I don't know oh, what that's a, sequel that is, but... I've seen them all, and I couldn't even tell you. I've seen the one... What is the one with the guy that drives around with a minigun in the back of like a 18-wheeler truck? I think that's Purge 2. Is that Purge 2? I believe so. Because that, that's when they're out on the streets. Yes, like, the, there's lots of running around on the yeah, streets. Yeah. I feel like most of the movies they after the first that? one are running around in the streets. <laughs> yeah. But I think the newest one is like they're in the desert or something. Yeah. That's the one. It's like the like, first purge or I think that's they're, the one she's they're in. They're escaping to Mexico. That's why she's in Oh, because Mexico is so much better, right? <laughs> well, they don't have the purge. Oh, it's Damn. The pur- it's already the purge in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> they be stealing PSPs and shit, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> Steal your fucking lungs and heart and liver. <laughs> Wake up in an ice bath. <laughs> uh, Hector Jimenez is Escalito. He is not in a lot of... Uh, uh, he's in a movie called. Uh, well, he's an epic movie. Remember epic movie? Oh God, the sp- early spoof movies. I think he might even be in it playing Escalito. That's gold. No, he's Mister Tumnus. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fawn from Narnia. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure epic movie also spoofs Nacho Libre. I'm sure they do. Because wow. that's the only thing I remember from the epic movie trailers. That was a time. How do you spoof Nacho Libre? I, you just right. You don't actually. None of these movies really did spoofing. They just did. Do you remember this movie? We're doing that, but stupid. And then had a character doing something raunchy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were all the same. Uh, and they are in a movie called Wild Hogs, uh, oh. which is a movie with Tim <laughs> Allen. Phenomenal. <laughs> Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Yeah. Remember when they were trying to make him a movie star? These are all just like. We're, remember when he got movies. arrested for cocaine? Mexico connection. <laughs> <laughs> Drawn line. This is this is off topic, but have you ever seen that movie with Mel Gibson? Is the I think it's Get the Gringo, and he's in a Mexican prison. I th- I've heard. I don't know if I've actually watched it, but but the the prison itself is like a city, like it's kind of like Arkham City in that way. Smart. But uh, it, it, escape good. from New York. Yeah, kind of like. But I mean, it's. I guess it's a real life thing. Like most Mexican prisons are like Just little shanty little towns. towns, and they're run by slum lords and shit. It's pretty <laughs> fucked up. But it's a good place to lose where'd... your PSP, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much a PSP gets on the black market <laughs> in a Mexican oh, prison I shanty can get town? Like Twelve shanks with a PSP. <laughs> Hundred cartons of cigarettes. <laughs> Some tequila. <laughs> um, speaking of tragic things, I love the way in uh, the scene where Nacho, the first scene where uh, Nacho brings in- Encarnacion toast, and yeah. uh, he tells him about his parents, <laughs> and, just, and he hands him this photo, <laughs> and then he, he snatches it. <laughs> <laughs> he folds it, he folds it puts shit. it up to his breast. <laughs> No, the what, the best thing. I never really paid too much attention to what she was saying. She, well, the first line. Well, my favorite color is light beige, <laughs> <laughs> and I love serving the Lord. And my favorite animal is He's poopies. poopies. <laughs> That's so crazy because everything you just said to do <laughs> is my favorite thing to do every day. <laughs> I love when they're just eating the toast and it's just like ASMR. Crunchy like, as fuck. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, the toast. It looks it's pretty like, good, too. This shit, no, hell no. There's no butter on it. No, nothing. <laughs> they're just eating crispy, freaking thick bread. Also, he just shoved that it's, toast under the door. <laughs> so this had been on the Concrete, dusty, dusty dirt <laughs> floor. Like This is pre-pandemic. This is before we cared about our health. So. We never, we didn't know about dirt before 2020. <laughs> Nobody had heard of it. So anyways... Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Tell me, who is this Encarnacion? Mm. Well, my favorite color is light tan. My favorite animal is puppies. I like serving the Lord, hiking, play volleyball. You gotta be kidding me. Everything you just said is my favorite thing to do every day. Shout out to all the actors who played the luchadors. Everybody was pretty great. Everybody in this movie is pretty stoic for the most part. Oh, very much. Um, I think I'll mention this a little bit more in uh, It's an Art, but the, the filming style, it's very in your face, and you, you just see every pore on everybody's face. And, like, I don't know. They, they, it seems like this director, like, found the weirdest looking people. And he was like, let me put them in my movie. It looks like he plucked people off of the streets of Oaxaca and was like, you Probably. want some money? Yeah. Like, well, it sounds I wouldn't be surprised. To speak in Spanish, good. like, you know. Yeah. It's all Mexican actors for the speaking parts, and I would assume it's something like that because they also it's they employed a Mexican crew during the filming. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of the people are just 
Oaxaca locals. Yeah, especially for like the non-speaking parts. I'm thinking of the guys that go to jump. Not well, they are not the guys that go to jump Nacho. They're the guys that Nacho picks a fight with because he thinks they're the guys that are supposed to yeah. do the pretend jumping. They yeah. look like just dudes you don't fuck with on the street. <laughs> well, the like, one guy with the he had some weird teeth or whatever. He just looked like a NPC from Red Dead Redemption or something. <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't look real. I was like, well, <laughs> you'd lasso them and be like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, the guy that plays um, Ramses, who's like sort of the villain of this movie, is an actual Mexican luchador. Oh, shit. And I guess he was a wrestler then and continued wrestling up until 2019 where he died with a heart attack mid-match. No way. So you live how you died. Damn. I guess. You know, go out. Live in the ring, die in the ring. Go out on top. He was. He died the best. Right. (laughs) Ramses. Who's the best? (laughs) Best. So R.I.P. Ramses. And just one other little scene that I noticed. This is towards the end of the movie. Uh, it's when Nacho leaves. So maybe we should back up and just, if you haven't seen Nacho Libre, Nacho Libre is the story of a, a, a monk in a mo- monastery. An orphan who grew up in the monastery. Yeah, who turned into a monk. A he's, friar. He's the friar. He's the... His mother was a Mexican. No, his father was a Mexican, and his mother was a yeah. Swedish or Norwegian, Norwegian. Je- Jesuit, whatever it was. <laughs> Jesuit? Yeah. <laughs> it was a Norwegian uh, no, missionary. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's the cook. They don't have enough money in this monastery to make good food. Uh, he also is secretly has a passion for wrestling, and then one day he gets the idea that him and a man that he meets on the streets of Oaxaca are going to team up to become a wrestling duo. Um, and then they're going to bring the money to back to the monastery. And, um, there's a moment where his secret is discovered because he's not allowed to wrestle and he exiles himself from, from the monastery. And then, uh, he writes a letter to Encarnacion, who's the nun that he has a thing for. And, uh, Escalito (laughs) delivers it. And the way he walks away, (laughs) do you know what I'm talking about? He bows and puts his hands back (laughs) while keeping eye contact, steps slowly backwards. And he keeps his hands behind him as he shuffles away. Yeah, it's great. Golden. Hug, hug. Keys, keys. keys. <laughs> little keys. hug. Little hug. <laughs> little keys. Little keys. Or when they find him, because we do have this montage where it's like, oh, he's on his hero's journey. He's in the desert. He's battling with his demons. And then Escalito rolls up in the little like electric cart that he drives around, and he goes, Nacho, I have news. <laughs> and he's like, how did you find me? <laughs> Out in the wilderness. <laughs> I saw you from the village. <laughs> and then they pan, and it's like maybe 50 yards away. <laughs> They're like, hi, Nacho. <laughs> he really thought he was doing something with that stick <laughs> hut, too. <laughs> How did you find me here? I saw you from the village. Yeah, it's the little things with this movie. The small stuff. I agree. Do we need to move along? Let's do it. It's an art, bro. This is where we talk about the specifics of the filmmaking process. That's effects, lighting, soundtrack. What's this? That's an art project. Okay, I like it. Picasso. Yeah, that way. Um, I think that's where I want to start because the first thing you get is the I am a real religious man song, yeah. which is sort of the theme of this movie. It goes over the t- uh, the titles. Yeah. And uh, it's a banger. And it's also just the perfect song for this movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. It's, uh, you'll, you'll hear a clip. So. The so, whole soundtrack from start to finish is so good. Yeah. Every song is super well placed. None of it's like traditional American music too. Am I the only one that gets kind of chills at the ending scene where he like he flies off the, the Oh yeah. yeah. It was kind of like this is kind of empowering. Like why is this movie <laughs> making me feel like this? Like you know it's it makes so you want to jump off the top ropes. Yeah. Man. I mean it's like your classic underdog tale and so 
Yeah. yeah. They don't they bring the song back for the they for do. the mm-hmm. eagle jump. Yep. Because uh, there's a there's a point in the middle where somebody tells him that uh, oh Escalito tells him that he needs to drink the eagle egg yep. yolk to get his eagle power. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta climb to the top of a cliff, yeah. drink a eagle egg. And get its nutrients, <laughs> and then you'll have the best moves in the world. <laughs> and then he proceeds to get get his ass kicked by a couple of like feral like dwarfs. He gets it's his a, ass kicked the, the entire movie. Well, no, it wasn't the That's satanic the one, but uh, I think it was right after that. It's right? the, it's his ass kicked by the knight guy, right? The guy who's know, maybe. dressed like it's, a knight. It's the battle royale mm-hmm. that it is. That's no, it is. it's not. At, well, after or no, cause so. Because remember, he's like, activate your eagle powers. He's like, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or is it with the twins? There's the tw- there's the gold twins it's, with it's, the masks. It's the other twins that aren't the satanic midget people. Yeah, so it's the it's the canceled. <laughs> hey, 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 little people. Little, little people. people. <laughs> I said dwarf, which I think is also not the preferred nom- Dude, that's totally not their preferred nomenclature, okay? <laughs> go the, up to okay. Peter Dinklage and call him a dwarf. The vertically <laughs> challenged. Yeah, there you go. Um, what were we talking about? We're talking about the music. And yeah, the music is all fantastic. It's mostly um, Mexican bands. The, yeah, the, like uh, mariachi kind yeah, of music. Yeah, the Real Religious Man song. That band is like from the 70s. And it's funny because I went on their Spotify to listen to it after I watched the movie. And they have this little personal message that's like, Nacho Libre, we're back together now because Nacho Libre like reignited our fandom. Like, they're oh, that's deal. amazing. And yeah. we're putting out new music now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's mostly Mexican music and mostly stuff that you haven't heard. I think in the credits at some point they play like tequila and a couple more like generic songs. I definitely but... don't stick around for the credits, so no. don't know that no. one. But... I, I just saw it was in the soundtrack listing, so I assume it's in the movie somewhere. But they're all songs that you have never heard before and will probably never hear anywhere else. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the filmmaking style. It the Something I never really noticed... Um, until this latest viewing was just how beautiful this movie kind of looks like the shots and the composition and just like the colors are just so vibrant and they didn't know. add the yellow filter just because they're in Mexico. Right. I mean, they did kind of have they that, but of, it was, it wasn't like, insulting. it wasn't dry yeah. either. Yeah. No, no. It's the color temperature that this was popular at this time. It's the same color temperature. I feel like Michael Bay uses in like the two thousands transformers. Right. Oh, the, or where, like, like the first one. Yeah. Where everyone's just a little tanner than they Yo, should be yeah. when it's sunny out. It's a little yellow when it's but, dark. It's like almost purpley. Yeah. That's literally yeah. just in the color temperature, but it's all dressed in mostly these beautiful, like there's lots of baby blues yeah. and yellows and reds bright colors yeah uh lots of bright colors and lots of like the, they really filmed in oaxaca mexico and they find lots of really cool locations like i don't know how much of it is a set and how much is genuinely there I, there was like a something they use a building old building they used for the monastery but like inside the monastery it's all like perfectly like grimy and dirty yep, and dressed yeah. up. If yeah. you look up Oaxaca, the first picture is the opening scene of the front of the monastery. Like it it's right there. Is Oaxaca is Oaxaca? Is Oaxaca. It, is it like a nomadic kind of I don't think town? so. Town it, it kind of seemed like that cuz you know there's a lot of like these kind of like grass huts or whatever. I'm I don't sure know. People just, live out in the smut a little bit. It, I was wondering if this was like indigenous, like Mexicans. Uh, like, maybe you know? it's deep, <clears throat> deep okay. in Mexico. It's like deep Mexico. It's I, almost by like Honduras or oh, wow. Central okay. America. Yeah, it feels like um, just like they did for Utah, where they just found like the most like in Napoleon Dynamite, where they found the most like rural backwater, like kind of just like <laughs> midwestern yeah. stuff they could find. They did the same thing for like we're going to find the most like rural Mexican like yeah. location we can find to also where luchadors are like heavily praised. It's like right. the number one thing there. Yeah, I kind of was like struggling to figure out what time period they're in. During this, because I thought maybe the 70s, just based on kind of like, you know, when Nacho would get dressed up and what he would wear. I yeah. get, that gives me a little bit more 80, kind of 80s vibes. 80s, I mean, okay. also, you got to think anything in Mexico is probably deep. Mexico is probably about 10 years behind us. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. This felt like the Napoleon Dynamite where it's just like everything's so behind. Like it's yeah. quote unquote modern day, but everything's just dragging it's, behind. Yeah. 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 And like what's stylish and in is. Yeah. Because I want to say Napoleon Dynamite was definitely like set in the 90s. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Nineties. I mean, those keychains were a hit. Yeah, in the they 90s, had Walkmans man. and shit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And I, one thing I want to mention is, while it's a very goofy movie, it doesn't skimp on like the wrestling stunts. They're going They're hard. Serious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well coordinated. There is uh, one knee in the final fight between Nacho and Ramses <laughs> where it's just a clear fucking miss. <laughs> and I mean, beyond that though, everything is spot on. Looks sort of real i mean it's a movie but I mean, it's, you know it's based on the form of wrestling that isn't quote unquote real anyways it's all like theater but it's real there <laughs> yeah but they they're doing like literal like wwe like yeah. they're doing like tombstone yeah. pile driver yep. uh the little the little person does a 619 yep. Rey mysterio move <laughs> um they're bringing out the chairs. But, like, people get thrown into chairs. People get They're tossed over the road. smacked ropes. around. And what was it? Nacho was whacking the dude with the corn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. One thing I want to mention is uh, there is so much corn in this movie. It's like it elotes. made elotes cool before the white people caught on. Yeah. And we're like, elote, everything. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a hell of a lot of a corn. Somebody gets murdered with corn. Maybe not murdered, Maybe, but they Oh, yeah, he gets I, impaled I in mean, the eye I mean, looking how deep corn. that thing is, that corn on the cob is touching that man's frontal lobe. <laughs> that was, like, incredibly <laughs> violent for this children's movie. And it, I, that like, scene always sticks out to me because, like, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, in the scene, they're leaving Ramses' party, and uh, two guys are just shiving the tires on their little little cart and then it's like a mexican standoff thing where the guy has a knife and they're just looking at him and then escalito chucks some corn spot on <laughs> hits him it's a guy in the eye but it makes no sense because it's like why are those guys out there popping their tires anyways did ramsey's people send them that's kind of what like, i figured yeah happened. i think they were ramsey's goons that were like we didn't like your son and they were so also rest- they were also wrestlers were they yes I know the guy with the long hair who pulls out the knife. He was a wrestler. Oh, he's the wrestler from the beginning? Yes. Was, no, is that the one with the belt? Yes. Yep, the, yep, yep. Whacking That's the him guy. with the belt. Yeah, so okay. I figured, too, I it was even, like these two wrestlers. I didn't even realize that. Just part of his like, little... Maybe they were the tag team, because that was a tag team. It was a tag team match, yeah. There's also an attempted rape scene. With the uh, oh yeah the big lady the, 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 the fucking tunnels <laughs> that, was my, that is my least favorite that is the joke that is aged the worst from this movie it, in absolutely. a movie where a Jewish man plays Mexican that is the thing that is <laughs> <aged> the <worst. laughs> yeah the the scenes with her are just unnecessarily uncomfortable they're just kind of thrown in there for no extra reason. comic relief you know? Nacho was ready to lace her up with a fucking cello. <laughs> like, he was, he was about to fucking <laughs> commit a heinous crime. <laughs> they just needed Escalito to like have something to do. Yeah, yeah. You know? A little side quest. You, you know? don't punch in the eye of an antique doll. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. One thing before we move on, I wanted to mention. I, this movie reminds me a lot of Wes Anderson stuff. And I don't know if you would agree with me on this. And are you familiar, Dakota, with yeah, Wes Anderson? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So Wes Anderson, he's really big on symmetry. There's like this really iconic uh, audio clip of him going off on his uh, his production crew. He's like, everything needs to be fucking symmetrical. <laughs> he's like, that's his whole thing with Kalen, all of his movies. You, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but do you know that one, that's a fake? That's a fake one? Wow. It's supposed to be a parody. Got duped. It's supposed to be a parody of the Christian Bale freak out video. Is it really? Oh, on the set of Terminator? Okay, okay. Because it's and the joke is because Wes Anderson's known to be such a nice guy. Oh wow! And he always does stuff that's symmetrical. Well, regardless, but regardless. he still does symmetrical shit. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw a lot of parallels with. And when was Wes Anderson's first film? Like, like what was his? Like ninety eight. Okay. Was Bottle Rocket. I was gonna say because maybe this director pulled some type of inspiration from Wes Anderson stuff. Um, I know this is before Grand Budapest, but. Um, I just saw a lot of parallels, especially with like the, the close up shots of people's face. You're really in there and you really see people's like everything, every feature and everything. Well, what's the what's the director's name again? Hess, Jared, Jared Hess. Hess. Yep. I mean, I think he used a lot of the same filmmaking techniques in a lot of his films, like the, uh, the quick Napoleon, montage yeah, sure. shots, the close ups on faces, like the yeah. awkward silence. I yeah. mean, 
in uh, Napoleon Dynamite, there's so many scenes where it's just zoomed in on, uh, right. you know, uh, what's, what's his fucking name? John Hedder? Yeah, John Hedder's <laughs> just face, and he's just, like, heavily breathing, like, <sighs> like... So, I mean, I haven't seen any of his other movies, Jared Hess. I mean, these are his only two good ones. There, yeah, I was looking through, and every other movie of his was a box was a bomb. office bomb. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, he has an interesting career just because it seems like he made he two had... cult classics and then fucked off. Two of the greatest comedy movies ever, I would say. <laughs> and <laughs> like... a whole bunch of other random bullshit yeah. that I've never even heard certainly, or seen. Certainly nothing that's ever had the same impact. None of them have reviewed as well. In fact, this one didn't even really review well. No, Napoleon Dynamite did decently. I think it had like a score of like a 77 on Rotten Tomatoes, though. And then the audience score was like 88 or something insane like that. Napoleon Dynamite's a 70-something, although this might have changed since like its original release. But Nacho Libre, I just looked it up, and it was sitting at like 40%. It is a certified Oof. certified rotten, which so, doesn't, which to me just tracks just because this is not like, you know. Usually the critics are like, actually, I prefer the movie about the people that live next to Auschwitz. That was the better. <laughs> that was the better movie. That's a real example. That's a real Oscar movie that's up for. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we also got to consider the time period this was into. This was the dawning of YouTube. And just like, think about what was on YouTube back then. Uh, it was like a bunch of random, like you could classify it as random comedy, where it's like the 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 fact that this guy is doing something super random is hilarious. College humor was taking off. Yeah. And like Anno- Shane Dawson. And annoying like, Orange. <clears throat> right. Or some like Fred, some Neon Cat. Yeah. Llamas with hats, like um, I just Candy Mountain. Wait, no, yeah, not Candy llamas Mountain. With hats. I mean, Llamas with Hats is one, but the famous one is Charlie the Unicorn. Oh yeah, oh Charlie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, just the the type of humor. Uh, I think people don't really. It's very just, slapsticky. Yeah, and it's really like not not shock value humor, but it's just super like what the fuck kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of potty humor and just like. Open hand slaps in the face. Yeah. Like, and I think Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre kind of fall in the same realm. Chucking a steak at somebody riding a bike. And yeah. Chucking a beehive at somebody while he's picking flowers. and Yeah, a lot of similarities. It's almost like, I wouldn't say the same movie, but right. like right. the rise and fall of it is very parallel. I mean, that's the thing with comedy is like uh, certain types of comedy only last for so long. And then you move on to something different. And then it's like Kevin Hart movies are everywhere. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. So, Yeah, know. who's watching all these Kevin Hart movies that he's putting out? He keeps getting Not work. me. <laughs> Who are these people? He's got, he's, I mean, doesn't he have like a 10 movie contract oh, with I'm sure. Netflix that probably just got like uh, yeah. re-picked up again? He, like, he's got a movie with The Rock like every year. Like one or two movies with The Rock every Ryan year. And Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. He's, I think he signed that Netflix deal too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, 360 deal on the Netflix. Uh, so Jack Black did these, speaking of early YouTube, Jack Black did these little like behind the scenes. I only watched a couple of them, but there's like 18 of them. These little like one to four a minute, like behind the scenes, like he called them confessionals, but it was just like a little behind the scenes snippets during the filming of this. And there's one where he talks about his, his stunt man. Like they couldn't find any stunt men shaped like Jack Black <laughs> because Stuntmen are not shaped like Jack Black. Fair. So it's just some guy named Tom that they paid that enough, you know? Just get slapped around. Just decided to do it, which, I mean, good on Tom, I guess. Right. I hope right. Tom's okay. Tom probably got thrown into a few chairs. Oh, man. Also, one last thing. I think every single Jack Black movie, they always have to have a scene with him singing. I think that's post school rock. I don't uh, any movie sure. before that. Not too much. I mean, well, I don't think he really had a lot before. Like school Tenacious rock. D and the Pick of yeah. Destiny. I mean, but that was also a music film, really. But well, I mean, that's he his... was in. Did he do it? Did he do his little music shtick in Orange County? I haven't. I don't think I've even well, seen Orange County. In most movies, where he, if he's the main character. And that the the Ramsey song, I guess he improvised completely. Oh, I, it, felt, made, yeah, it felt he, improvised. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jared, I guess Jared Hess was like, "Yeah, I didn't write this far, so uh, you want you want to?" He's like, "Don't worry about it, I got you." He's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. an amazing singer, though. Oh, he is really good. He's got a really good voice, and I, I heard like a, 
an audio clip of him doing like a Metallica song. I was mm-hmm. like, this dude, he fucking rocks, man. I mean, He's have got... you listened to actually like Tenacious D, the band, yeah. any of their like? It's pretty good music for sure. It's not bad for just two guys and like a, a couple guitars. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. I am the singing at the bar. Sing at the party. Everyone is dancing. Happy party. But Ramses is not dancing. He does not dance at the parties. Ramses number one. He knows the secrets of desire. Ramses is the one. He puts the people all on fire. Should we move along to, hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Take it away, whatever you're ready. All right, let me just get that last measurement on your Thank you. you know, I, I'm, I need this for the, uh, the wedding. Okay, well, I, I, should... I need it really quickly. Like, uh, it could week. take about a week to do. It could take a week. Mm-hmm. So, what are you trying to say? It's trying to say that I'm so big, my bum is so big, you need to order to various countries far away to get enough material to make a pair of pants so I can fit my incredibly obese buttocks into a pair of your specially made little suit. No, I mean I'm the only one working here this week. Oh, okay. Never back down. I mean... Keep your faith. Wrestle for the better of others and not one's not vanity. Not yourself, yeah philanthropy i was gonna say well in that note uh this is kind of based on a true story not like much of the literal details but there was a real uh guy named Fray tormenta friar storm sergio gutierrez benitez and he was a mexican priest who became a wrestler to win money for his parish it's pretty badass that is pretty neato so that is pretty sick and I think one thing that it is commenting on in a light way is just the restrictions of religion. And, uh, you know, Nacho, he's forced to hide the man he really is. He's a luchador. Yeah. He's also kind of forced to be a friar, too. Yeah, That's true. And he's, uh, you know, he's doing his best within the system to change the system. They bitched his ass for years just making soup. <laughs> Truly. Making beans. Truly. But then at the end, what's he got? A really cool bus. And an action figure of himself. And And his lady. Well, they're just, they still work together and they're bringing all the ninos to uh, the... Tenochtitlan or something like that. Yeah. (laughs) On a field trip. (laughs) To go see the ruins. Sister Encarnacion, what do you think? Me and the ninos go on a field trip. (laughs) He said, when I win, I'll buy the children a big bus. (laughs) (laughs) He's been plotting on that field trip, man. (laughs) (laughs) This fucking musty-ass monastery. Let's go see some other old rocks. He keeps turning back to her on the bus, and he's like, yes. Is it we did it? Yes. (laughs) I mean, you got to think. There's there's probably a couple weeks had gone by since that W and buying the bus. For sure. I mean, got to clear some paperwork. He he definitely got his clout up, though, that's for sure. Action figure? Come on. Is it's that true. is that selling out? Can you do that for the Lord? <laughs> Can you do that in Jesus' name? Yeah, who's Be getting an the action proceeds? Fig- yeah, right. Like <laughs> the church. <laughs> what if there's an action figure of Nacho and then one of Jesus? And you get them to fight. Sacrilege, baby. Look, but then you can put it on the rosary when you're done. But it is in the Bible not to wrestle your neighbor. <laughs> there you go. That's true. I re- I forgot about in the in the Sermon on the Mount. That's when Jesus said that. I think it was actually uh, the Ten Commandments coming down from the hill, man. Both stories, they're coming down from the mountain. They're both on hills. Yeah. Mount. Sermon on the Mount. Shut shut the fuck up. <laughs> Do you know your Bible? Have you? Ever- I only went to private school for nine years as a raised Catholic. So naturally, I retained zero of that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, on a, on a related note, one of my coworkers, Tangent, uh, was just, I just came in a little late to work, as I do, and uh, she's already talking, she's talking to everyone, and I was, she's like, yeah, so I need to ask some people, because apparently they're all secret Christians at my work, or at least a lot of them are, not secret Christians, but you know, I figured this out over time, 
Yeah, really got to pry for that kind of yeah. information. Yeah, right. you got to, yeah. Uh, you know, I prefer they stay in their closet, but, you know, they can do as they wish, I guess, <laughs> these Christians. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, they were ta- she was like, yeah, I got to talk to someone smart about the Bible about this because she was reading about all the incest in, like, the Old Testament at the beginning, and I was like, yeah, that is some stuff, right? Yeah. You and know, then- somebody tried to explain that to me once. Like, a, I don't know if it was a teacher, mm-hmm. but they were basically like, oh, yeah, it's because, you know, it was kind of the start of civilization. So they kind of had, it was slim pickings, basically. And I was like, I guess that kind of checks out, but not really. Yeah, but then it's like, well, what happens when you when a bunch of, you know, when lots of incest happens, the species gets dumber. Well, so I mean, that what leads kind of origin is that for us? That kind of checks out, though, yeah. <laughs> if you really think about it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> God is just trying to like, he's, he's trying, trying to hold to, it together. Over he's, here. Just, he's just trying to avoid this whole incest topic that I kind of, it's, it's just in the Bible. And uh, and then Michael out of the two of us so should know the most. <laughs> <laughs> so then like the raping kind of. and pillaging of Genghis Khan. Was that good for the society then? Less incest? I don't well, know. It's, spreading seed and well i guess no because then it's like the odds of future cousin incest is very high in the genghis khan area there was like millions of those motherfuckers yeah yeah but genghis khan wanted all of them he he seemed like the type of dude he didn't really care who he was you know all i really know about genghis khan i learned from uh bill and ted's excellent adventure and all i know is if you brought him to a mall that's not a good idea (laughs) 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 <laughs> I remember he was a real asshole in Night at the Museum. I remember that. <laughs> That's right. Sounds like Genghis Khan is a real dude. <laughs> Our core historical text, Bill and Ted and Night at the Museum. <laughs> I'm gonna become like a like a teacher at like a not a not a private school. What do they call it? a charter school? And be and, like, <laughs> Robin Williams was actually yeah. Roosevelt. Yeah, I'm going to be a history teacher, and that's all we're going to study. It's going to be Bill and Ted and then Night at the Museum. And we'll be like, yeah. That's I guess, how it happened. I guess I have a question about Nacho Libre, though. Is this movie racist? You know, a lot of people are saying it is, but a lot of people are saying it isn't. I don't think it is. Is this the equivalent to Robert Downey Jr. wearing blackface in Tropic Thunder? No. Well, a, yeah, that's that's different. He was like making fun of how deep actors go into yeah. their roles and stuff like that. And but it was the fact that he actually was he like did in it. blackface. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, it's not like they tanned up Jack Black or anything. They just kind of gave him a little perm, which it's I don't true. know why the fuck they did that anyway. <laughs> like, it was definitely a wig. It was definitely a wig. <laughs> But I think, they just I don't know, him. this movie is a little bit more tasteful in that aspect. Because, I mean, they actually gave him some backstory. Yeah, they explained why it. He got, was yeah. kind of like, I mean, the he was The only white, white guy out there in yeah. Oaxaca. I remember, I think Jack Black told a story in some interview where he was like, how can I do this? I am not Mexican. And Jared Hess was like, yeah, we we're, we, de- we dealt with that. Like, <laughs> we got away. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I did, uh, I was scrolling through some of the reviews on Letterboxd, and one, there's one uh, particular white that was like this if you want racist and dumb stereotypes watch this one and everyone was like uh i'm half mexican i fucking love this movie everyone i know loves this movie yeah, I, I don't know i've never really heard of any like backlash coming up with this movie really so i don't know and to be fair i don't really have a problem with robert downey jr's portrayal either and that's a Thunder. fantastic that fucking movie's movie. great and it's hilarious and i think you when know? when you add in the nacho libre facts of like this was filmed in oaxaca mexico using a bunch of mexican actors and a bunch of like yeah, mexican, full crew, mexican crew yeah i mean it's like oh it's very clearly a loving tribute and like i think the guy that says this is full of stereotypes like yeah maybe a little bit but it's also like i think it really nails the 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 catholicism of mexico yeah and the like rural culture of mexico in a way that's like more honest than a lot of like, yeah. I mean, it's heightened in a goofy way, but it's like more honest than like so many quote unquote more serious movies that are like cut to Mexico and it's just like the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like what you said, like the fact that they didn't have that stupid yellow uh, filter, sepia yeah. filter over it, like even though they had a little bit, it, it didn't, it wasn't that fucking 
stupid though you know there's also another letterbox review that very well if it was satire or not but it was just like yeah this movie has more to say about mexico than sicario a movie about drug cartels <laughs> and like like sicario thought it was saying what nacho libre actually says sicario is sick i'm telling you man this movie depicted elotes before they hit mainstream man it's true now you can get elotes in a cup yeah, that's got a different name though. They they invented a lot. That's called esquito. <laughs> that's a, that's esquito or something like that. Esquito. Esquitos. That is, <laughs> I swear to God, corn in a cup. They invented a lote the same way Travis Kelsey invented the fade. Have you seen these stories of um, people going to barber shops asking for the Travis Kelsey, and Travis Kelsey just has a basic like two layer fade. He looks fade. like a number six on the chart of white man haircuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In regards to that uh, letterbox review, I, I just love when white people try to tell us what's racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually how you should feel. <laughs> Offended. Thank you, uh, colonizer. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, my comment for that guy was, you are what conservatives picture when they hear the word San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody's offended at Nacho Libre Not today, we have other things on our mind <laughs> You say San Francisco, I immediately think Dawn of the Dead <laughs> I think heroin needles And homelessness And gay, uh, gay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're Gay rights Gay positively Yes, yes. Gay. gay Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and what was my rent bill <laughs> what <laughs> why am i sleeping in my car <laughs> i can't sleep in my car anymore i got broken into <laughs> i parked my car but then it got icy on the street and it just slid down the fucking hill <laughs> and it hit a gay man <laughs> <laughs> and i got arrested for a hate crime san francisco <laughs> 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 Now I'm a heroin addict. <laughs> it's like uh, angel on your shoulder, San Francisco devil on your shoulder, Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know half like half of Oakland's bought it by the white folks now? It is. Yeah, it's, it's called all, gentrification. It's all Steph Curry's fault. Yeah. Like, kind of. Yeah. He's like, I don't want that shit by my house. I don't want to smell that fucking air. You know the phrase, not in my backyard. That is the response of dozens of Atherton residents to a proposed affordable housing project there. Some of the opponents include none other than Steph and Aisha Curry, who say the new units would be built right behind their mansion. <laughs> <laughs> if I can hit you from a three point <laughs> Oh shit <laughs> Shall we move on to Let the hate flow through Good Use your aggressive feelings Boy Let the hate flow through you I fucking hate that I don't know as much Spanish as I thought I did. Right. <laughs> That's on me, though. That's right. nothing on the movie. I took four years in high school. Oh, dude. I went K through eight and two years in high school. Maybe that shit did not stick. I had a bunch of something. Mexican friends. Michael, we had a bunch of Mexican friends, and we just know curse words. I took two years of Spanish, and I mostly know one sentence that I use a lot. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say it. I know what I meant. I know what you're talking about. And he's always got the same inflection at the end every time yeah. he says it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Más rápido. I like to say, Puerte, puto. That's one of my favorites. Um, we already touched on it, but Escalito and the BBW is just not a good side <laughs> tangent for this movie. Yeah, no, that that, that one brings it to, <laughs> to the to the bad place. I also think the movie kind of drags towards the end a little bit. So I'm not gonna lie, Kalen sat down and was like, "This is a unanimous perfect movie." And I, when I was rewatching it, maybe it was just my mood, but I was not as entertained as I remember. I still love all of my favorite parts, but there's also parts. It's just like there's a little bit of like. It's just kind of meandering, which I yeah. guess, depending on your mood, can be good or bad. I mean, it seems like all of his movies are a little meandering. I feel like Napoleon Dynamite fucking drags. Oh, for sure. And drags. For sure. 
But I don't know. This last time when I was watching it, like I was kind of saying earlier, I went into it thinking like, ah, I don't know if I'll find it as funny or entertaining as I have the other hundred times. And second, that fucking thing popped up. I'm laughing my ass off and I'm engaged yeah. and I'm, yeah. I don't know. So I, maybe I was in the mood, but it held up. I didn't find it slow at all. Actually, I thought it went really quick. It's only like an hour 20, something like that. Like it's a short movie. Yeah, that, it is not too long in the That whole scene where they go to the party. I feel like that whole thing could have been cut out. It was kind of unnecessary. Well, I mean, they, I get, they wanted to be a pro. You got, you know. Yeah, I get that, but I mean, just like everything that was involved in that scene, it was kind of like we didn't really need that. And then you have like Nacho singing with the luchador. I mean, not the luchadors, the uh, the mariachi band, and like I don't know because he was undercover, bro. I, don't I know. get. It. I, get I it. think that all I holds up it. to me. It is the same thing as Napoleon Dynamite, and we have inducted Napoleon Dynamite to our perfect movie list, but. It is the like this movie feels like it's kind of stretching to be feature length. Yeah. Like it's like it could have been an hour. It could have like, been like an hour and eight minutes instead of an hour twenty. Yeah, instead of like an hour twenty eight. But it it just was like that's not a real theatrical release time. It needs to be that extra twenty minutes. You know, I didn't about, need to see Jack Black cut open a cactus and eat from it. <laughs> yeah. That didn't fucking wasn't do it that for a me. part of the montage though? So, I mean. Yeah, but that's still like 30 seconds of my life I'm not going to get back that's every true. time. But he was getting his nutrients. Yeah, because that fucking egg didn't do shit. <laughs> I think the whole scene where he was in the wilderness, that he didn't really need that. Uh, just like looking around and hopping on rocks. Yeah. And it like, I don't know. They could have just showed him walking in his piss poor stick hut. and then Or just cut to him by a campfire. You know? yeah. yeah. But it's the same thing as uh, like a Scorsese movie. <laughs> hold on, <laughs> hold on, wait, <laughs> hold on, wait, because it, it has lots of detours that you could cut, but do you want to? Now, Scorsese movies are on the other end of the movie length spectrum, where they're like, "This is three hours, four hours, like this is str- like a long ass movie," but all those detours had the flavor. But I think those detours are were also rich in dialogue that well, was engaging. This was just As opposed to montage clips. Yeah. 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 I think there's also just some jokes for me that fall flat, like the, the little, uh, the, the BBW side tangent. And there's just a couple of like jokes and tangents that I'm like, all right. Yeah. Could have been one less montage. I don't, I don't know. There, there's not a lot to like pick apart Mm-mm. in this. Uh, yeah. Shall we move along? To our final question. Is this a perfect movie? He lost a baby brother. Perfect in every way. I had a baby brother. I had a little baby brother. And he was perfect. Perfect in every way. Hands down, yes. I would agree. I mean, you can't get much better than than Nacho Libre as far as no. comedy. Clean and comedy. Like clean com- yeah. yeah. Like you could show this to your nieces and nephews when they're like five and they'll yeah. think it's the funniest shit ever because yeah. there's a couple farts, a couple open hand slaps. Watch, you know? I feel like also it's just a movie for the time. I think I, I, there's just kids don't really watch this kind of shit anymore. Or at least teens don't. They don't yeah, watch fair, movies. Yeah. I feel like this was a time for us and that should be celebrated. You know? Oh yeah, it's kind of like a once in a in a lifetime kind of thing. Yeah, um, I will third that this is also a perfect movie. Will be added to the list, and that's the end for Jared Hess because I don't think we're going to be putting a Gentleman Broncos or what's John that movie where he wears the helmet? Don Ladon Napoleon Dynamite wears the helmet. Benchwarmers. Yeah, isn't that a Jared Hess movie as well? No, no. Isn't there a movie with a- uh, Andy Sandberg? That's a Jared. Are you thinking movie? of Hot Rod? And that's not. That is that's not. not nope. But that's also in the same veins as like a Napoleon. Dynamite. Yes. So this. Yeah. Those yeah. are all like late oh, two thousand okay. semi clean. Although I think Hot Rod's a little more. Ranch. A little more ranch. ranch. That was a PG thirteen, and then you get all the way to the super bad. And I think that's another thing to kind of point out with nachos. Like there wasn't a single boob. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a single f bomb. And you don't need that for comedy. No. You know what I'm saying. Nope. There was several farts. Yeah. 
but I think there's room for farts. <laughs> after after the first match, he's in the <laughs> in the stall like, come on, baby. <laughs> 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 Or wasn't it when he jumps on uh, Escalito, Escalito for the Escalito first, first time? time he's he, getting ready and he just jumps for no reason. Rips one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, several farts. So I, I'll never not find a good fart funny. Yeah, I think I think flatulence and like poop is just gonna be funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> call me immature, but I'm sorry. It's just. There's nothing funnier. I mean, sometimes there's just nothing funnier. Than Wait, that. is there a part in this movie where he picks up poop for some reason? Yeah, yeah he, he smears the shit on his picks eyes. Up a cow the pie. Cow, yeah. yeah, is that in the wilderness? No, it's uh, in training. the training montage, and he's like shooting a mm. fucking bone. Fucking beams him right in the back. <laughs> like, well, he's got. You see shit. the dude's back like clench up. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know that bitch actually oh, hurt. Though. Stung, like, man. It had to sting. <laughs> yeah well it's, it's official nacho libre is part of the list so you guys said school of rock is also in there right yes i mean it's our second is jack, is black, jack black just a perfect actor now <clears throat> uh, is he getting up there i wouldn't say that i would say that if he's given good material like any actor he can be he can be great that is he jack black is uh i think his closest comparison is adam sandler and I love Adam Sandler, too. Adam Sandler's made a lot of the worst movies you've ever seen. So has Jack Black. But when, you know, executed rightly, Jack Black recently, especially like his turn as a voice actor, as like, say, Bowser. Bowser. Yeah. Didn't see that movie, by the way. It's, it's pretty, pretty, dec- pretty, pretty decent. Good. But Jack Black's hit rate is maybe a little higher than Adam Sandler because Adam Sandler seems to only use his movies to bring his friends on vacations and shoot movies with them. <laughs> hey, I can't lie. I think Hubie Halloween is fucking gas. <laughs> I love There's that a movie. new movie with Adam Sandler called The Spaceman that looks really interesting. And it's another serious type movie, much along the same lines as like uh, Uncut Gems. Never saw that one either. You should check that out. Uncut Gems is, really, is pretty good. Uncut Gems is really good. <laughs> Uh, Jack Black is not usually good in a serious role. He went on no. to do King Kong. I liked him in that, man. He's fine, but I'm just saying, like, there's a reason that did not become his thing. He's or, just like, got a goofy fucking face. He's got it, a goofy... Yeah, yeah. He's just more, like, it's like you could put, make Jack Black do that, but why? Because Jack Black is so much more fun doing the other thing, you know? Fair. But then you get, like, the Robin Williams where he's, like, super severely depressed because all he can get is, like funny roles you know what i mean that's like, not nah, man what was this shit goodwill hunting or the other one i mean he's just yeah he's good in uh dead poet society and yeah. which we may do next week oh, that's yeah. that's what our guest might be bringing to the table next week Ooh, our we. next guest but be... rob williams has that rob williams has a lot of serious parts he does he does um, i still think the best kind of like more so serious role from like a comedic actor was uh um truman show with jim carrey that movie, we should do that sometime because I think that might make it onto the perfect movie slot as well. Kalen, you need to watch Insomnia, Christopher Nolan, Robin Williams, uh, uh, Al Pacino. Oh, shit. Al Pacino Stacked. goes to Alaska to investigate a murder, a series of murders. Robin Williams may or may not be the killer. It's a good Is one. Is that the movie where he takes pictures? No, that's 24-hour photo, okay. I think. He's also a murderer in that one, too, I think. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Dakota, thank you for being our first guest of Friends February. Thanks for having me. Glad I could finally uh, be a part of this. It's overdue. We inducted a perfect movie, so I'd say this was a successful podcast. Clink. 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 I'm tired of getting paid the podcast to lose. I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you smash that like button and subscribe.